Today I'm going to teach you how to make my pressure cooker chicken coconut curry. Try saying that five times fast. Uh, this is a super easy recipe. My whole family loves it. We make it probably weekly at this point. It is our new family favorite. Now if you love recipes and you love Instant Pot recipes, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss anything and let's get started. Now to start this recipe, we're actually going to be using the saute function. We're going to be cooking quite a lot that way before we switch over to the pressure cooker function. So we're going to add liquid to deglaze the pan later, but a lot of people who use the stainless steel pan have said that they've gotten a burn notification for this recipe. So I recommend using the non-stick pan if you have that option available. Otherwise, just be really careful when you're deglazing and make sure that you get everything so you don't get that burn notification. We're in the coconut oil and the ghee. Then push the saute button and let those melt completely. Now ghee is clarified butter. You can usually find it is the Asian section of your grocery store and it's amazing. But if you don't have it, you can just use more coconut oil. Once the oil is melted, we can add our onions, our garlic, and our ginger. And give that a stir. You wanna cook that until the onions are translucent and the garlic and ginger are nice and aromatic. Now it's time to add all the spices to give our curry its flavor. Now you could just buy a curry paste that you like. I just like to create this myself. One of the other tips that I'll give is you can pre-measure all of these spices out in a bowl together and then add them all at once and then you won't have the problem of this uh, overcooking or sticking too much while you individually add all the spices like we're gonna do right now. First up, cumin, one of my favorite spices, cinnamon, cardamom, coriander, turmeric, red pepper flakes, and garam masala. Finally, salt and pepper. And give that a stir. Now keep stirring this together and cook it for about two minutes. That's gonna give the spices time to cook together and integrate really beautifully with one another. You'll also notice that this is where we start to get stuff sticking to the bottom of the pan. That's what's gonna cause the burn notification later on if we don't take care of it. So one, make sure that you don't use a metal spoon inside the nonstick liner. If you're using the stainless steel, you can. Uh, I like to use something a little bit flat uh, and just kind of keep scraping it. When we add the liquid in just a minute, that's gonna help deglaze this. So just make sure that you don't have any spots that are like stuck on there. Now we're gonna add some crushed tomatoes. Give that a good stir and a good deglazing. Make sure you rub your utensil all across the bottom and make sure there's no spots that have any stuck spices or garlic or ginger on it. Now let's talk coconut milk. There's two different kinds of coconut milk in the can and in a carton. Now the stuff in the carton has a bunch of additives to it so that it doesn't separate and it's more of a milk substitute. It's not for cooking. The milk in the can, however, is for cooking. Now if you've noticed, if you leave your can for a while, it will separate. You'll get the liquid on the bottom and the solids on top. You actually want that. So make sure that you do not shake up your can. In fact, about a day before you make this, stick your can in the fridge and that will help the separation become a lot more clear. What I usually do is I open the can from the bottom, flip it over and open it from the bottom and pour all of that liquid out. And that is this creamy liquid right here that's very liquidy and we're gonna add that right now to this. And the thicker stuff we're actually going to save and add afterwards. Now the first time I made this, I just added the whole can to the Instant Pot and I got the burn notification really fast because this is just simply too thick. If you're making it on the stove, I would totally add it right now to get that coconut flavor stronger throughout the dish. But because we're making it in an Instant Pot, we're gonna actually hold this aside and we're gonna add it after it's completely cooked. And then finally, we're gonna add some coconut water or you can use chicken broth right here. I've used both, I like both. It just kind of depends on what you're going for, but you just do need to add about another cup of liquid. And you wanna let that simmer for just a couple minutes. Next, we're gonna add our potatoes and our chicken and we're gonna close the Instant Pot and cook it. But before we do, you have two options. You can leave it just like this with all the onions and the garlics and the tomatoes all a little bit on the chunkier, thicker side. Or if you like your coconut curry a little bit smoother like I do, you can take a hand blender and smooth it out right now. Now I'm gonna add the potatoes and the chicken thighs. Now you can use chicken breasts instead, of course, if you prefer that to chicken thighs. Now if you're using chicken thighs that are thawed, you're gonna to wanna to pressure cook this for eight minutes. Once it's done, you wanna do a quick release. I like using the end of a spoon. 
go ahead and open that up. And now we're gonna pull out all the chicken to shred. In the meantime, we're gonna take this thick coconut cream and add that, as well as some cilantro chopped. And I'm actually going to push the saute button and bring this back to a boil while I shred the chicken so that the cilantro and that thick coconut can come together with the flavor. And you can shred this chicken however you want and make it as small or as big as you want, but it should just fall apart as you go to shred it. Once the chicken is shredded, add it back in and you are ready to serve. If you enjoy pressure cooker recipes, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss anything. And in the comments down below, let me know if you have any requests or recommendations or other recipes or cakes that you'd like to see on the site. So now it's time to give this a try. Um, I love the flavor of this. Tons of rich flavors without being so spicy that it like burns your mouth. I'm all about spice that's flavorful versus spice is just hot for the sake of being hot. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you give this a try. Let me know what you think. Let's watch the next video.